Hello and welcome to the second set of FMSP core prerequisite videos. These videos are designed to help you get ahead with independent study of the A2 core, ready to develop the skills in A2 further pure modules. This is what you should know already. It's really important that you are confident and fluent with all this material before moving on, so make sure you've done sufficient consolidation work beyond just watching the videos. It will help if you have these things ready, so pause the recording now and go and get everything together. Make sure you've set aside enough time to complete the video and tackle the questions as you go. You'll find this video has a much greater proportion of questions for you to try, so don't be misled by the length of the video. You'll need quite a bit longer than this to work through it. This whole set of videos is focused on integration, and in this one we're working with some standard functions. Here are three results that you will already know because we've found them by looking at differentiation. Integration is the reverse of differentiation, so this is just thinking backwards. We're going to do a lot of thinking backwards in this video, particularly focusing on doing the chain rule backwards. Indefinite integrals of functions like sine of 2x and e to the 3x are best found by thinking about the chain rule backwards. Here's an example. Start by writing down the derivative of sine 2x. That's 2 cos 2x. That means the indefinite integral of 2 cos 2x must be sine 2x. And if, if we want just cos of 2x, then we need half of that. Here's another example. Write down the derivative of cos 5x. That's minus sine of 5x and differentiate the 5x, so multiply by 5. So the indefinite integral of minus 5 sine x must be cos 5x. And if we just want the integral of sine 5x, we're going to need to multiply that by minus 1 fifth. This method can be summarised as guess, check, adjust. You write down broadly what you know the answer is, you differentiate it in your head, and then make the adjustment as necessary. This is a good method because differentiation is much easier than integration, so a sort of trial and improvement method can be very useful. Eventually you'll get sufficiently fluent at it that you'll hardly notice that you're actually making any changes. We can use the chain rule backwards to get these results, and these might be worth wor learning as standard results rather than working them out. Pause the video for a moment and differentiate the right-hand sides to make sure that you do agree with these results. You won't need to work everything out from scratch. There are lots of useful results in the formula book. Make sure you make use of them because you won't get marks for working them out from scratch if they're in the formula book, unless it's a show that question, of course. Pause the video again and make sure that you can find these in your formula book. OK, don't forget to check the list of derivatives too. Do you know where all the integrals and derivatives are in your formula book? If your book is arranged by module rather than topic, remember to refer back to previous modules as necessary. OK, it's time for you to have a go. Pause the video and try this one yourself before listening to me work through it. OK. Broadly speaking, the integral of sine a half x is going to be cos a half x. If we differentiate that, we're going to get minus a half sine a half x. We just want sine a half x, so we'll need to multiply that by minus 2 to get the right answer. Just differentiate this in your head now to check you've done it right. That will be sine 2 sine a half x multiplied by a half, which is sine a half x. So we've done that right. Don't forget to add the plus c, and we can see that that is answer c. Here's another one. Pause the video and have a go yourself first. 
OK, if you found that difficult, perhaps you forgot to look in your formula book. If you look there, you'll find that the integral of cosec squared is minus cot. Remember that the inputs always stay the same, so we'll start with minus cot 2x as our guess. Now differentiate that. We'll get 2 cosec squared 2x. So we need to have a half in front. So minus a half cot 2x plus the constant, and that is answer B. OK, we found that when we differentiated e to the x, we got e to the x. And when we differentiated the natural log of x, we got 1 over x. So that gives us two standard integrals. If we integrate e to the x, we get e to the x. And if we integrate 1 over x, we get log x. Don't forget to put the plus constant if it's an indefinite integral. Note that your formula book doesn't mention those. Now, we have to be a little bit careful with this one. If we just plough on ahead and say, OK, that's natural log of x between the limits of minus 1 and 1, and we try that on our calculators, log 1 minus log of minus 1, then you're going to get 0 minus O. Oh, math error. What's gone wrong? Well, of course, you can't have a natural log of a negative number. Why? Well, let's have a look at the graph of 1 over x. If we're trying to find the integral between 1 and minus 1, we've got a problem because the area is infinite. This um, curve never reaches the y-axis. So how do we solve this problem? Well, for starters, we need to make sure that we never try to integral, integrate 1 over x over uh, 0, so between a negative number and a positive number. But if you look at that diagram, you can see that we ought to be able to integrate 1 over x on either side of it. So let's have a look. Let's just look at the negative side. If we want the integral between minus 2 and minus 1, well, by symmetry, that's actually the same as the integral between 1 and 2, but negative. So that's actually equal to minus the integral between 1 and 2 of 1 over x dx, which is minus log x evaluated between 1 and 2, and that's minus log of 2. If x is negative, then log of minus x is defined. We can use the chain rule to differentiate log of minus x. That gives us um, 1 over minus x, and then differentiate minus x, and we get minus 1. So that's just 1 over x. So when x is negative, the indefinite integral of 1 over x is log of minus x. These two statements can be combined into one statement using the modulus function. The integral of 1 over x is the natural log of the modulus of x. So if x is negative, we just use the positive value. Note the restriction. x is not allowed to be equal to 0. So we're not allowed to try and find the area under y equals 1 over x with limits on either side of 0. OK, let's do some examples. We're thinking of the chain rule backwards again. If we differentiate e to the 2x, we'll get 2e to the 2x. So the indefinite integral of 2e to the 2x is e to the 2x. And if we want just the integral of e to the 2x, we'll need a half of that. OK, the integral of 1 over 3x is the same as one third of the integral of 1 over x. That's one third of log of x. Don't forget the modulus signs. And of course, 
the plus constant. And another one. If we differentiate log of 2x plus 1 using the chain rule, we'll get 1 over 2x plus 1. Differentiate log of thing, we get 1 over thing. And then differentiate the 2x plus 1. Multiply it by 2. So if we want the integral of 1 over 2x plus, just 1 over 2x plus 1, that's going to be, well, broadly speaking, would get log of 2x plus 1. If I differentiated that, I get two of them, so I need a half. Integrals of this form can be found by thinking backwards from log of the denominator. If you differentiate log of ax plus b, we get a over ax plus b, and therefore the integral of 1 over ax plus b must be 1 over a log of ax plus b. OK, it's time for you to try some again. Pause the video and work out the answer before continuing. OK. Integral of e to the 5x. Broadly speaking, it doesn't change. It's still going to be e to the 5x. Differentiate that in your head would give you 5e to the 5x, so I need 1 fifth in front of that, plus a constant, and that's answer d. Pause the video again and have a go at this. OK. Integrating 1 over 3x minus 1, broadly speaking, that's going to be natural log of the modulus of 3x minus 1. If I differentiate that, log of thing gives me 1 over thing. That will give me 1 over 3x minus 1 multiplied by 3. So I need to put 1 third in front. Then evaluate that between 1 and 2. That's 1 third log of... Well, 3 times 2 is 6, take away 1 is 5. To take away 1 third log of 3 times 1 is 3, take away 1 is 2. When you're asked to do these and give your answer as uh, an exact expression, you'd be expected to simplify this. So we'll take out a factor of a third. And then note that when you subtract two logs, that's the same as log of one over the other, so log 5 over 2. We don't need a constant here because this was a, a definite integral. OK, a couple more examples. Pause the video again and try this one. Right, now when you've got root signs and um, negatives, uh, negative indices, it's a good idea to write it out in this form. just makes it easier to think and it's worth the seconds that it takes to do that. Okay, thinking backwards, integrating something to the power minus a half will give me that to the power plus a half. Now differentiate that in your head. That will give me a half thing to the minus a half. And then when I differentiate the bracket, I'll get 4. And 4 times a half is 2, so I'll get double what I need. So I actually need a half in there. You might want to just differentiate that in your head again to make quite sure you've got that right. OK, we're evaluating that between 0 and 2. So that's a half. 1 plus 4 times 2 is 8 to the half minus a half. 1 plus 0 to the half. 1 plus 8 is 9. 9 to the half is 3. So that's 3 over 2. 1 to the half is 1. So minus a half. And we get an answer of 1, which was answer B. One last example. Pause the video and have a go at this. OK. I've got an expression squared. So the safest thing to do is to multiply that out. That's um, e to the x squared is e to the 2x minus 2 e to the x e to the minus x. Well, that's e to the naught, which is 1. So that's minus 2. 
and then plus e to the minus x squared, which is e to the minus 2x. So that's what I'm integrating. And if you integrate e to the 2x, broadly speaking, I get e to the 2x. But if I differentiated that, that would be 2e to the 2x. So I need a half. Integrate minus 2, and I get minus 2x. Integrate e to the minus 2x, and I'll get minus 2e to the x. So I need minus a half e to the 2x. And don't forget the plus constant. That's answer A. OK, that's all the content. What now? You need to do lots of practice. Don't skimp on this. You have to do it sometime, and now is the best time to do it. I hope you found this video useful. The next one continues with new techniques for integrating. Goodbye.